We want to do a short video here where we want to give a very, very strong call to mission. I'm, I'm uh, together with two real missionaries uh, in Mexico right now. I'm also a missionary here. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to say first a little about it. We are all missionaries. Of course, wherever we are, we, we are in this world. We are not part of this world. We are seen with Christ in the heavenly. And he has given us the Holy Spirit. And as the Father sent him, he now sent us here on earth. But I want to say that there is also a strong call to go out to the end of the world, end of the world all over to preach the gospel. And there is a big need. And I want Galen and, and Todd to share something here, but I want to read one verse here. When Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit, actually in Acts 1, where he talked, he said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you and you shall speak in tongues in your churches. He did not say that. The reason, the main reason to receive the Holy Spirit is not to stand in a church and speak in tongues. The main reason to receive the Holy Spirit is to receive power. Not power to get wealth and health and big the American dream, but power to what become a witness. But not only a witness in your school. Yes, it starts there. In your city, yes, it starts there. But what Jesus said here at Jerusalem, in all of Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now, if this is written to me, where did I receive the Holy Spirit? Torben, you shall receive power, hallelujah, when the Holy Spirit come upon you. And you shall be my witness in Brande, Denmark. That was where I lived. Then in Eller Brande, and then in Denmark, then in Europe, and then the, to the end of the earth. <laughs> So it starts on our street, it starts in our neighborhood, it starts maybe in our city, and then we talk about our country, but it should not stop there. And you are from America, That's right. and you are living as a missionary in Mexico a long time, you are from America, and you are here now, but you're going another place. What will you say about this? Pre preach to people. Go ahead. Um, well, I've, uh, my name's Todd Peterson, and I've been in Merida as a missionary for just about 20 years, and next year I'll be here 20 years. And uh, my, I remember growing up in, in Florida, um, maybe not in a, a rich family, but in a family to where, uh, you know, more than my needs were being provided for, and, and seeing, you know, what life would be, you know, to uh, get, a, you know, get a good career, go to school, get a, a good job and get the things that I want and, you know, let that be what makes my, my life happy. And I remember as a young man, about 18 years old, uh, God just helped me to understand that my life had to be more than just what I could uh, buy, what could I, I can earn and buy, and then and, and this live that as my focus. And God put something in my heart uh, at that young age, and I knew that I had to like that there was more that there's more in God, and uh, understood that God's plan is a mission plan, right? The whole Bible is a is a story of missions mm -hmm. from Genesis to the end, and we have to be part of that plan in somehow in in some way. And of course, we have to have the right understanding of what we're here for. The, the, why God has given us life, why He has saved us, why He has called us. And in one way or another, we have to be convicted that uh, I'm here for this plan to see um, the gospel taken to, to the ends of the earth. And may, maybe just one other thought here, and uh, you can share again, is, you know, when we see in the book of Acts, chapter 15, the, the council of all the, the, the leaders of Jerusalem, Paul is there and they're dealing with things of circumcision and, and James comes and the reason why, like that final word of like why we should receive what is happening in the Gentiles, James goes back to the book of, um, I, can't, I can't remember, uh, Amos, when he says that that the the restoration of the tabernacle of David, right? And I've heard so many times that's like related to like, I don't know, music or something or like a big worship movement. And I'm sure it's about praising God. But really, when you study that 
what that prophecy was and in the context that James brings it in the, the book of uh, in, in Acts uh, 15, it's that the, basically it's about the fullness of the Gentiles coming into to the faith. Mm -hmm. It's about that, uh, uh, that the gospel going to the ends of the earth, going to the Gentiles. And basically James is like, this is what God has always wanted. How can we say that this, uh, that uh, the Gentiles have to become Jews, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so really the idea of God's tent, God's presence, God's tabernacle being extended to all nations mm -hmm. and that we all can come and be invited into the presence of God. And, and that was like, once again, uh, right there in the book of Acts, this is our call. This is our mission. And that is the restoration of the tabernacle of David, seeing the gospel go to all the world, all Gentiles. Yeah. Uh, uh, just when he uh, talked in the beginning about there's more in life than this, I thought about the American dream that is almost like when you grow up in America, it's like the hide up hide. Hey, we have our dream, the American dream, like a good life and so on. Like when you get born again, there should be not an American dream, there should be a, a missionary dream. That's right. There should be like that, that thing, this is what it is. I, as Christ was sent here on earth, sent, he was sent, the missionary, sent, we are now sent. A and have that desire and longing to really live that life and, and be out there. And, and like Todd, you, you had a longing in you, you took the step. You, you are living in another country. It's not your country. You speak fluent Spanish, I would say. Uh, married to a Mexican woman and have kids here. And this is your home. This is my and, and this is your life. How many of you out there who are seeing us had not that still that, that small voice or that dream as a child, but you had changed the 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 missionary dream to the American dream. You have, have changed that because you have been stuck in a normal life mm -hmm. where you just become busy living the everyday life. You're ground number three in, 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 in Mark 4, where we see the worries of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and longing for other things grow up and, and, and quench that missionary inside of you so you never take that step. And, and, and a, another reason to be a missionary is you don't fall away the same way. Like the, the hardest way to live as a Christian disciple is to just dress up and go to church on Sunday and live a normal life. But when you're out here, like here is, is a good life, but we had like a spider like this yesterday in our house. Like, what is the call? Triangular. Tarantula. I would say the biggest spider I've ever seen in our house. We had a poison snake here the other day. Coral snake. There is no water in our house that's working right now. The electricity go here. There, there, is, there is things that's always like, oh, okay. It could be easier. It would be easier in, in California in a nice house. <laughs> but, but what do you get here? You get fruit. Yeah. You get people who are meeting God. You, 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 your life means something in a new way, and you are blessing to other people. And, and, and that is the dream. That is the American dream. That is the dream for all of us. That is what means something. Yeah. It's not the big house, the big car. What mm -hmm. means something is, is to really be a blessing. Can, can I just be real specific? I, I think this will help somebody. Real quick, real quick, real quick. So when I made that decision, I was a 16, 17 years old, and I had two things that in my heart, I was convinced that this would make my life different mm. uh, as I was growing up. And I was like, at that point, like just kind of depressed and struggling, and I wasn't happy with many things. And I thought, I'm gonna, there's two things if it happens, I'm, I'm gonna be in the life. And I got those two things. I got my own room. My parents moved into a bigger house. Mm. I have a family of seven. So I okay. finally got my own room. And I got myself a nice big Dodge Ram truck. <laughs> okay, <laughs> life is good now. Life is, uh, but in my mind, I was convinced that that was going to make me happy. One day, I'm driving home. I'm maybe 17 years old, and I'm just as sad and depressed <laughs> and like longing for something in life. And I'm like, and I got exactly what I wanted. 
And in that moment, I knew that I had to make my life about something else. Uh, yeah. And so maybe someone needs to hear that. In the book of John, Jesus says to his disciples, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Obeying the commandments of God is a, is a reflection of a love. And that love has got to be the, the final motivation of why you do what you do. You know, if you don't have the love of God, you're not going to go to missions. But if you are consumed by the love of God, then you're going to look at the mission field, you're going to look at the missions, and you're going to say, well, Father, you said to go. Jesus says, go unto all the world, make disciples. I was just teaching a, a missions class the other day, so this is fresh information. The world is approaching 8 billion people. And 5.3 billion of that 8 billion live within that 1040 window. We've heard of that 1040 window for many years now. But the stats aren't changing. In all of the mission endeavor of all the churches of the world, there is only 3.3% of missionaries that go to that 1040 window that has over 5 billion people in it. And 1.6 billion of those have never even heard the name Jesus Christ. And so when, we, when we're looking at the big picture, you know, we're, we, we have to be motivated by what's in the heart of God. He wants that every tribe and tongue and nation hear so that he can come back. Until this gospel is preached to all the world as a witness, he's not going to come back. He's waiting on us to do the job. We can, we can get involved and we can, we can help him accomplish this Kairos time so that he can come. We all want him to come, but we, there's things that we have to do. For every hundred dollars that's raised for missions, now get this, five pennies, five cents goes to the 1040 window, to the five billion people. That's two thirds of the population of the world. And we are not doing what we're supposed to do. So, Torben, one of the focus of this school that we have here in Mexico is missions. And he has told us, he said, I want, I want Merida to be a hub. I want Merida to be a hub to where people can come fly in, get refueled, and then go back out. Go back out into the mission field. Go back out to where the need is, where God is sending. Uh, but carrying what? What are you going to go with? What are you going to do once you get there? And that's that's why I'm here in Mexico right now. I want to receive everything I can receive so that I can reproduce that in another culture. So we are planning on making another move. We've been here for 35 years. We've worked in, in Asia. We worked in uh, India. And we're, we're going to go back and, and uh, establish a, a, new, a new move of God. Mm. And so, yes. I was just reading here, what good is it, my brother and sisters, if somebody claims to have faith but don't have deeds or works? Can such faith save them? Suppose our brother and sister is without clothes or daily food. Well, I would add that, suppose somebody are without the truth, without the gospel. And if some of you just say, ah, oh, peace to you, dress well and this, but do nothing about it. What do it matter? In the same way, faith without works is dead. And, and, and there is really a strong call. And what I admire again, and he, he just had a birthday the other day. 66. 66. Ah. He calls me an old man. No, he's, <laughs> but, but he, he said the other day when he was priest, he said, I'm willing to lay on a wooden bed in Thailand or India where he wants to go. And I'm like thinking, ah, beautiful. Like, let's say, Lila, you're 66. We are a little younger. We're in the forties. And then we have those in the twenties. If we look at life as all, so many people from 
10 to 20 dream about being missionaries. Mm. People in the churches, they hear stories, they dream about being there from 10 to 20. From 20 to 30 or 40, there's a few who take the step, few, but many get entangled in, yeah. in school and education, everyday yeah. life, and, and they need to build a house and they have to do it. And, and they are busy with that. And they say, okay, okay, maybe I can, I can do it later. Then we come for the 40s to the 60s, where many like, yeah, it's, it's, they get frustrated about life, but they're still so stuck in it. They don't know what to do. And then from the 60s, they're saying it's too late. It's not too late. Like, right. it's, it's never too late. Get rid of that house. Sell it. Give it. Like, like try to imagine this. That, so try to imagine this scenario. You have five more years to live in. You can continue living your life and you can sell your house. Uh, and in five years you die and your house is being sold and, and, and some, uh, the, the government is taking most of the money and the rest is being given out to, to some kids who have enough already. Or you can end up taking it, going on mission. And, and, and what our money in America can do in Thailand, in India, and also even in Mexico, like, the salary here is like thousand dollars per month, around there, or uh, good, good less less than thousand dollars per month for a family, and 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 we we just need to do something about it. It's it's really time to do something. So so, think back right now and and take a little time. Say, did you ever dream about being a missionary? Did you ever have that? butterfly in your stomach, that thing like, hey, this is what I want to, but never took that step. I want to say it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. If you continue, just dream about it. A dream never makes things a reality. Yeah. It's first when you put action behind it. It's like faith without action is dead. You can have a faith here. Yeah. Oh, one day I, I believe, I have faith that I'll be a missionary. That If you had that for 30 years and it haven't happened, I can tell you it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen if you continue in the same way. And, and I want to challenge you, like, he's going to Thailand and India and we want to send teams with him. Do you have Thailand and India on your heart? Reach out to them. Do something. And we have people here now going to a three-month three school, and then we are going to send them all over the world to, to many parts of the world. And, and I, it's, it's just time for it. Like, I, I get frustrated that people talk about the end times. I believe the end times, which I talked about the other day, mm -hmm. yesterday, the kingdom of God. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but why do I get frustrated? Because I, I get frustrated that when I hear people say, I believe Christ is coming soon. I, I, I believe that also. But they say, I believe Christ is coming soon. But their life mirrors something completely else. If you truly believe that Christ will come soon, you don't have all the time in the world to do what needs to be done. Like he, there is the gospel of the kingdom needs to be preached in all the world, to the end of the world, and then the end will come. You need to set some action behind it. And, and this is a strong call to join. And it's not because you have to join here. We cannot have everyone here anyway. <laughs> Find a missionary school, get a backpack, get a ticket, and, and go to that country and go. say, God, now I'm here. You call me to this country. What should I do? walk out on the street and you find a person, you have the first contact. Right. And then you meet another person, you have the next contact. So you actually even don't need a missionary organization to send you out when you are sent from the king himself. That's right. You don't need a funding of resource and newsletter. If God said go and it is truly from God, he will provide our needs. Can, can I say one, one last word as you're, you're talking, Torben? Um, we, we, we got to obey the call. We got to obey Jesus, uh, the plan that uh, we see all throughout the Bible. I, I would just also add, though, it is important that we, we really get convinced of this. And I would say get some gravel in our guts. 
and, 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 you know, like the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom, like we really got to be convinced that this is what we're called to do because it won't be easy. No. And, uh, you know, just being here 20 years, Galen, you know this is true. And even being here in Mexico, which is not as difficult as maybe a place in the Middle East, but still at that, it, it has its trials. I've seen many uh, missionaries and people come and go and get discouraged and this and that and the other. And I would just encourage you to, uh, as you, you seek God about this, really this, you got to come to a place of like surrender, uh, counting the cost as the Bible tells us to do so. And don't fear if God is in it, he will provide, as you mentioned, we, he will give us strength. And there are many, many testimonies of, of, of such things. Uh, but at the same time, uh, don't, don't come thinking that um, it will be easy. As you love to say, life is hard. <laughs> I, I, I said it the other day because Galen was uh, sharing his uh, call to a mission in India and Thailand. And, and we want other people to share because some of the students said, where are we going? Where shall we go? And I said, don't ask me. Like, like, like we have people sharing and then people need to see God. Because I said to them, I'm not going to tell any one of you where to go. Because if I say you need to go there and then then go and then life will be hard, I want them to stand with more than, yeah, but Tom told us to go. No, we have to be the Lord send us. We go because God said. But I want to say, when that is said, if you don't active, seek God and ask where to go. <laughs> And you're busy with other things. I don't think you hear anything. So it still starts with us to take the first step. And then God, he can give us a dream or a vision and put it in. And, and maybe I will confirm other people would confirm. Like right. here, Galen said, I'm going to in Thailand. Hey, this is a confirmation of what it is. So you join Galen in Thailand, not because Galen said go, but because the Lord said go and use Galen to bring you to Thailand, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Last words. So come on, I, I want to, every one of you out there, like, but I just, we talk about the harvest is great, but the workers are few, even here in Maryland, what we're seeing, there's so, you, we have to stop now, he's going to go and baptize somebody. <laughs> there is so much work for all of us, and, and I cannot stop thinking sometimes of some of the church I met in America, yeah. where there's like thousand, thousand people in a church, where many are sitting there, like, here in a sermon, there's the same preaching years after years, here in a new sermon, and they become dull of hearing in the end because they never do anything with them. And they're sitting there, and like, when do the pastor discover me? When do I get an opportunity to serve? Like, I'm frustrated over my Christian life because nothing is happening and there's nothing to do. And there are thousands sitting there. We are on the other side of the ocean here in Mexico. Like we can fly to Florida in three hours from here. Mm -hmm. And we are sitting here and there is hundreds of villages here. That's right, hundreds. Yeah, thousands of villages. And then we talk about India and Thailand and other places where there is whole cities where they have heard nothing. Right. It, they, it's, the contrast is so too big. It's, it's almost like in, in, in one place they... The, the, the food is staining all they have McDonald's and Burger King now all the food and they are pewing up and they are throwing the food out because they don't know what to do with the food and the neighbor house they, are, they have only rice and no flavor because they have no money to buy food so in one house they throw it out and right. burn it and don't know what to do with it and another house like could, could we not just take a little of this and, and then bring it there because then you will feel more joyful there because you don't need all of that food. And, and you will bring joy to that home because you bring it there. Yes. And, and this is what we are doing with the gospel. That's right. I want to talk to the elderly. Uh, that, that meaning me, I'm, I'm called the old one. Um, we were comfortable in Florida. We had a ranch. We uh, Very nice. It was totally self-sufficient. I had solar. I had cattle, pigs, chickens, everything. Totally self-sufficient. Went to India. And the Holy Spirit just clearly spoke to me. He said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm getting myself self-sufficient for the Antichrist. You know, when he come, I'll be, I'll be set. And again, the Holy Spirit spoke. What are you doing? So, you know, those words put things in perspective. Um, 
get your eyes on the harvest. Yeah. It doesn't make any difference how old you are. You know, I, I, I want to go out in a blaze. I, I want, I, if God could take me, take me while I'm preaching, you know, I'd be very happy. Amen. Uh, I'll just finish by saying, of course, we would all believe that uh, be a missionary wherever you're at. Uh, you know, get out there, share the gospel, be a blessing in your church. Uh, we would say yes. At the same time, uh, do it. Do what God shows you. Do what he puts in, in your heart. I know that I would not be who I am. Uh, my life would be very different if I did not make the decisions that I did. And I can't thank the Lord enough for, for his grace and his mercy in that. And just be willing to do it. Um, and of course, I'm still growing. Of course, God is still doing many things. But I know that it's marked my life mark my relationship with God, has marked who I am, and it would not have been my experience, even though it's the same God, same promises, same Bible, my experience would not be anywhere what it has been if it wasn't for a willingness to, to go. Right. Beautiful. We win with this. God bless you all, and uh, thank you for joining today.